my little paws there. Hey! I was requested for this, but I was planning on making it anyway, so somebody read my mind. Ten Laws and Rules of Lenses. i got a link below for this if you want. Ten Laws of Lenses to Fight the Stupid. Hooray! Fighting the Stupid. It's not about fighting. So, what are the ten laws? Because um, a lot of people don't really know. I mean, who out there is just... Nobody has the time for that. You folks have, like, wives and children and normal jobs, and, you know, you work out, you know, and nobody has time to do all this stuff, <laughs> except for a couple weirdos like me, huh? And since I'm not selling anything, all the better. And since I know a tremendous amount about lenses and even more about field theory and light and how a light interacts with glass, even better still! Hooray! And I'm not selling any lenses. Even better still. You know, like, click the link below and buy this lens off of Amazon.com, which gives me a kickback. I don't, I don't have any links like that. Okay, rule number one. Never trust anybody's images claiming they represent a lens. Like, I just got so-and-so lens, here's a few images. Wisdom necessitates that you ask, did the lens produce that image? Or did you use that image from the lens... Okay, to produce a radically different image. Necessity. Of course, the person could lie to you. No, no, that's what the, came out of the camera. Obviously, no lens produces an image. I mean, it drops it on a sensor that passes through 80 converters, that's in our firmware, and then it gets dropped under your card. So when we say um, an image was produced by a lens, we, of course, imply an image that was uh, captured then processed by the camera, and then dropped on the card. So that's what we're talking about, too. Um, with no, like, even ISO, of course, is radically processing an image in camera. Anytime you turn the ISO dial, oh my god, here we go, let's turn it. That is uh, applied gain. So even if it was uh, straight out of camera, yes, it certainly is the case that, you know, there's plenty of manipulation that can be done in camera. We have to obviously acknowledge that fact. Uh, number two, this one will really piss people off. But some of the best images, like, oh my god, just like, <gasps> are like from 40 year old Leica lenses and these old, old design lenses from Voigtlander. And it's like, oh, these new, in new lenses that are coming out from uh, Meyer Gerlitz and uh, some of these other people are like, this is based on a 100 year old lens design. And everybody's like, oh my god, I love it. All they did was just like CNC machine it so it's made a little better, but it's the exact same lens design. AR coatings don't really radically affect, they don't radically affect images at all. If you have a bunch of elements, it actually uh, cuts down on the interior inter-element uh, bounce back and forth of lenses, which adds a haze to the image. So it does do that, but as far as the actual image itself, no. People think, oh my god, it's got a magical angel dust coating on it, and that's why it looks bad. No, that's not the game. <laughs> that, that crap does not work that way, no. Only three things in lenses, uh, lens design have improved in the past tw 25 years, basically. Only three. Really? Yeah. Wide angle resolution and distortion improvements. Wide angle lenses have gotten a lot better. Obviously, so autofocus speed, tracking, motor design, um, linear, like quad linear motors on the, on the, uh, crap, the uh, Fuji 90 millimeter F2. Number three, in lens image stabilization. Well, obviously that's pretty recent. All that other stuff, no. Those are the only three improvements in lens designs in the past 25 plus years. What? Really? Yeah. Not only that, a lot of the best lenses people are raving about are old, old, old lens designs. Like, a prime example is that Voigtlander 58. People love that lens. I mean, I've had hundreds of people buy that lens. It's a manual focus lens, too, by the way. That is based on an old lens design. But the images from that are incredible. <laughs> um, so, that's it. Number three. Any fool that buys a lens uh, based merely upon its resolution is no better and no smarter than a stupid alcoholic or a wino that buys a wine based merely upon its alcohol percentage. Yeah, I know that cheap stuff at Walgreens. You know, you got 20% alcohol content. 
<laughs> this is no different than falling in love with a beautiful person. It's like, ooh, she's sexy. You know, who actually is like, you know, she's got a lot of STDs, including some deadly ones. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> yes. You know, it's like if you only fall in love with a resolution, it's like falling in love with a beautiful person that has deadly diseases. Bad. All lenses are to be judged upon a criteria that I came up with. Well, whether you use it or not, I don't care. RPG, BCD, resolution, phase gain, bandwidth, construction, and drive, meaning autofocus drive. Any and every lens ever made, even if it's a manual focus lens, which obviously has no drive other than your hand, any lens ever made can be judged on those six criteria. It took me a long time to come up with the finalization that everything fits within those six criteria. Um, micro contrast, number five. Micro contrast is set in stone. Any and all apertures pertaining to a lens design. If it has bad micro contrast, the lens, it cannot be resurrected in Photoshop or Lightroom to look good. Especially, this is insanely important for black and white photographers. Insanely important. Those are intertonal details. If it wasn't captured, you cannot add it there. Add it in Photoshop. Well, you could blow the image up to like a thousand percent and like start shading things in with a paint tool, but no dice on that one. No. Uh -uh. Six. This is the one that confuses people. Actually, all, most of these confuse people. Glass is evil. Glass is evil. Regardless of its quality, design, coating, or chemical additives like uh, niobium dioxide, lanthanum dioxide, thorium, which isn't used anymore. There's all sorts of additives are put into uh, lenses. Any fool who tells you that a quality 35 millimeter, for example, um, with like 9, 10, 12, 14 elements produces as good or better image quality than a good 35 millimeter with 4, 5, 6 elements is a liar, a fool, and an idiot, and no ability to discern good from excellent. All of this actually stems um, from uh, actually uh, number 10 on the list here. This is because all lens design is a trade-off. Number seven, glass is both an insulator and a capacitor, irrefutable, undeniable. Everything in the universe is electrical and magnetic by nature, including light itself and glass. All lenses are designs, okay, with unique attributes of capacitance, resistance, magnetic permeability, and dielectric permittivity of low capacitance spectrum visible light, i.e. red light, and high capacitance spectrum visible light, i.e. blue-green Okay, both of which, either end of the visible light spectrum, behave radically different. Kind of like a prism, kind of like sends blue light way the hell over there, and red light kind of does not alter that its path that much through a prism. Behave radically different from each other, passing through any and all glass elements of any quality or any design. Mm -hmm. Number eight. Perceived depth and saturation output from a lens design is either optical, electrical, or both. I mean electrical. You know the crap that powers those solar panels on your roof? Yeah, they work off of light, which is uh, an electrical circuit. You know, it causes a, a charge, which is tapped, and it kind of powers up your... Light is electricity, girlfriend. Glass has certain magnetic permeability and dielectric permittivity properties, Okay. Perceived depth and saturation. Now, there are saturation sliders in Lightroom. I'm of this insane belief that I would rather have the best possible output out of camera so I don't have to jack with the image for 10 hours in Lightroom. Hmm. Anyway, electrical, optical, or both. Luminal depth uh, and saturation. Spatial, translational, rendered, focal, or compressional. Compositional depth and bokeh. All of these are relation, uh, relational to the depth and saturation of uh, the perceived depth and saturation of uh, the image. Now, the depth is perceived, the saturation is not. The saturation is actual, the depth is perceptual. Um, same as a hologram. A hologram is a totally flat image. Guess what makes it look like nobody's seen? 99% of you have never seen a true art hologram. You haven't. If you saw one, you you know. You'd uh, soil your underwear. You'd go, oh my god! They are amazing. A true art hologram. <whistles> Damn. You could do a Google search on that too. Type in like true or professional hologram. Now you'll never see the depth, but you could see, you know, a really good idea of what one looks like. Whoa, really? Wow. 
because it's two dimensional does not mean there can't be amazing depth there. How an image is rendered is not radically that different in the perceived depth of a professional hologram, for example, which most of you have never even seen. Okay? Time is money. Therefore, never buy a lens based upon what you can do with this image in Lightroom or Photoshop. Rather, buy it based upon what you cannot do with this image in computer. Well, that makes sense. Jeez. Number 10. All lens design is itself an art form. There are, for example, a thousand ways, more than a thousand, to design a 50 millimeter lens. All lens design is a trade-off and output. You can make the lens output very sharp with no chromatic aberration at all, basically. But with that will come sacrifices and other qualities which cannot be added in computer. What? You there's not a slider for micro contract? No, there isn't. That was detail that was never captured. Oh my god! <laughs> and bouquet qualities. You know, if you have a certain radically unique bouquet, you ain't going to change that in Lightroom or Photoshop. All lenses have a limited spectrum of purpose. However, no lens company will tell you what that is because they want it to appeal to as many people as possible. But every lens has a limited spectrum of purpose. Um, like that new 105-14, if the background is really dark and the subject only is illuminated, the lens don't look that bad. If everything's pretty bright, the lens looks horrible. Horrible. Or how fast an autofocus is, you know? When it comes to portrait lenses, they don't have to be that fast. Found the best portrait lenses are manual focus. Usually your subject obeys your orders. Sit still, go over there, do this, do that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so every lens has a limited spectrum of purpose and learn what that purpose is and never buy a lens outside its design spectrum of purpose. So these are the 10 laws ha, 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 that I give to you <laughs> like Moses from the mountains, right? On lens laws and rules. You can take this and you can beat the stupid out of people with them. Use them like a big block of stone and uh, fight the stupid. Because the stupid is everywhere. Oh my god, it's all over the damn place. And you will encounter it everywhere. And you'll see crazy people saying, like, lenses that have the worst micro contrast, they're like, this lens got the best micro contrast in the world. Really? Compared to what? You're smoking crack. That lens is horrible. Horrible. Well, that's just your opinion. It's like, no, girlfriend, I got the facts right here. Here's the test shots. You're dead wrong. No! I love it when people say something. Like, best compared to what? You know? How many lenses have you owned and tested? Oh, seven or eight? Oh, okay. So how the hell do you know if it's the best at anything? Well, 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 but, 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 but. Exactly. STFU. You know what STFU means? STFU. Shut the f... <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> these are the 10 laws to fight the stupid because the stupid permeates every corner of the universe. Every corner. And you have to have like the sword of wisdom and the shield of truth and uh, the coherent mind of, uh, of Hermes to, uh, to uh, cut your way through the stupid to see the light of day. And then we're going to harken back something, something, Plato's cave analogy, something, something, Plato's cave. <laughs>